Welcome ladies to week five, day four of the theme, Gratitude. It has been quite the day so far, even though for me it's morning. Um, I have a little bit of echo going on in my office, um, but that's okay. Uh, I will be in a new location soon because I am grateful that we closed on our house. Um, that has been an extreme blessing. Um, the, we are proud owners of a new house. We haven't actually owned a house in 16 years. Um, we have rent, rented most of our marriage, um, but uh, we have finally settled um, in a home here in Bentonville, Arkansas. And uh, we absolutely love it here and uh, are praising God because the closing and the entire process went extremely smoothly, um, more smooth than we had imagined. So that I am super grateful for um, is having a smooth closing on our home. So what are you thankful for? Be sure to leave that in the comments below. So yesterday we talked about Psalm 37, um, waiting patiently on the Lord and having trust in him that he will guide and direct our steps. So let's jump back to our passage for the week, and that is John 11, 1 to 44. And we are going to focus on verse 44 for today. So turn to John 11, 1 to 44, and we are looking at verse 44. So John 11, 44. And it says, and the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave cloths, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. So in verse 44, Jesus says, unwrap him and let him go. Now let's go over to Colossians. Colossians is after after Philippians, Colossians 3, 1 to 17. And when we look at these passages, I want you to see the commonality between um, John eleven forty four 44 and Colossians 3, 1 to 17. So here we go. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at Christ's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when you, your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it's it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people, he loves you. Uh, sorry, holy people he loves. You must clothe yourself with tender hearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, gentleness, and patience. 
Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God and with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So I picture Jesus looking at my sinful life. Sorry, the sun has decided to come out. There you go. Um, so I, I picture Jesus looking at my sinful life and knowing I want to follow him to be free. He tells Satan to unwrap the cloths of sinfulness and let me go free from the bondage of sin. It is absolutely beautiful. Sorry, I'm going to close this so y'all can see me. It is absolutely beautiful. The picture that is painted here, um, and you see the commonalities between um, Lazarus being wrapped up, being confined, not being able to have that relationship with Jesus. Um, and so Jesus says, let him unwrap him unwrap him and let him go. So Lazarus was born into a new life per se. Like he was, he was able to be risen from the dead and to continue to have a life um, in a friendship with Jesus. And I just think that's so beautiful to be able to have a friendship with Jesus, to allow him to renew us, to be restored to a Christian life as a believer, to follow him and receive the blessings he has for us. So in your notebook or journal, write out how God has freed you from a burden in your life, um, maybe a sin in your life, and share this occurrence with a friend or a spouse and be the encourager for them today. Maybe they're struggling with a sin. Maybe they're struggling with something in their life that's a burden. So be their encourager and let them know that, listen, God has done this for me. He can do this for you. So let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for releasing us from the bondage of sin, for renewing us in our souls so we can be with you. And Lord, we, we are so grateful and so thankful. We have our hearts of praise for what you have done for us, for what you have freed um, us from. Thank you, Lord. You are our Savior and our everlasting friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings.